hi everybody and welcome back to my astrology channel today i'm going to be talking about the moon in libra this is a response to a request well i've actually had two requests wrong i had one request of the moon in libra and then i had a question related to the moon in libra and so that motivated me to get around to the request <laughs> so um First of all, I would just like to say thank you to those of you who've subscribed to my channel. It really means the world to me. And I'd also like to say thank you to those of you who like and comment on these videos. It really motivates me to keep going with them. Um, so without further ado, let's get started with the moon in Libra. Well, the moon in Libra is, is certainly not a bad position for the moon. Um, it's a Venus ruled sign and it's an air sign. Um, and the moon is fairly comfortable here. The moon in Libra is somebody who is motivated emotionally by relationships with others and who's, to whom it is very important to have um, good relationships with others or for relationships to be on good terms. It's important for the moon in Libra to be popular. This is similar for all Libra placements. This is a sign that values relationships generally. But when the moon's here, the emotions are very much affected by that orientation towards relationships so it's very important that the relationships are kept like i say in a peaceful and harmonious condition now that <laughs> one thing that people with libra placements will probably know is that that is not always uh, possible or even um, likely wherever libras are there's usually a little drama around them and that's because when you are very much oriented towards relationships it's very difficult to avoid drama because you're um, always involved with other people and that is something you can't control um, people have different uh, prerogatives and these always end up clashing well libra moons do their best to try and uh, keep that from happening but like i say it's not always easy and i think that this may have something to do with the reason why libra despite being um oriented towards relationships does like to keep a certain distance between um themselves and others i this is partly because they're an air sign as well because they don't like to get too um embroiled in emotional uh, mess <laughs> and they often can be because the thing with libra placements in general and this goes for the libra moon as much as any is that they're very charming so they tend to have this venusian charm and like we've said before, Libra is sign is ruled by Venus and it's a particular type of Venus as well, Venus in air. So it is the more, um, it's the type of Venus that is associated with Aphrodite Urania, which is uh, the Uranian Aphrodite. We, Venus or Aphrodite was the daughter of Uranus remember in the myth she was she sprang from the waters from the foam on the top of the waters on the coast of, off the coast of cyprus when uh, uranus's uh, testicles were cut off and his semen was thrown all over the sea well that's how aphrodite or um, venus came into being and you see that depiction on uh, the famous fresco where you see Venus um, coming out of a, an oyster shell or something like that. can't remember what it's called now, but it's a very famous depiction of Venus. The Uranian Aphrodite is a 
kind of Venus which differs from, let's say, the Taurian type of Venus, which is quite earthy and associated with the body and sensuality. Well, the Uranian type of Afro Aphrodite is a more, more like the Libran type of, uh, of Venus, where she is somewhat distant, very aesthetically pleasing, very beautiful, and almost aesthetic perfection. But she is not particularly warm. And she is also quite elusive. And I think Libra's, um, in the sun placement and in the moon placement, Libra's are very elusive. So that <laughs> what tends to happen with them is in typical Uranian Aphrodite uh, style, they throw out a lot of charm to others and others are drawn in to the charm. Um, which is impossible to resist and it's very welcoming this these Libra placements have a, a way of very much welcoming others and perhaps making them feel more valued than they are and so people are drawn in and then the Libra placement the Libra moon this goes for the sun as well a lot of the time uh, has to cut them off because they get more than they bargained for because they don't want uh, as much closeness as that a lot of the time. It's very important for Librans to have people kind of orbiting around them, people admiring them, people who can be uh, spoken to when desired and and who will allow them to play their favourite Venusian game, which is throwing out the charm, throwing out what is very aesthetically pleasing and very, uh, very seductive and, uh, uh, and charming, and um, and then and then having people drawn in drawn in having people gravitate towards them but they don't like to be caught because that is when the Libra game has to stop Libra doesn't like to be caught Libra likes to continue this game of seduction and having people chase them but once they are caught they no longer can play the game not even with the person who has caught them so the fun exists in the game itself for Libra a lot of the time and so for a Libra moon while relationships are important they are not in any hurry to get into the kind of sticky situations that water signs might like to get into in their relationships and like in with the earth signs are more comfortable with the where we're just kind of living mundane reality together um so that can be a source of problems for a libra moon because they need that relationship but they also need the distance in order to enjoy um relating in the way that they want to relate so it's very important um, for a Libra to kind of somehow manage to maintain distance from potential partners. And often people are very drawn in very quickly to the Libra charm. And so it can be very difficult to negotiate. Well, luckily, Librans are very good at negotiating things. So, um, they they usually manage to get away with it with some tact though the um though they often leave a string of broken hearts behind them <clears throat> so what happens uh, in response to uh, i had a question with regard to what a libra moon would be like with pluto contacts well it's an interesting um 
combination because what tends to happen in with a Libra moon with Pluto contacts is that they enjoy the game this game of charming and seducing with a degree of atten intensity which suggests that they're much more serious about it than they are and what tends to happen is that you get this kind of uh, dynamic with others to extremes so they will really come on quite intensely the charm will be really difficult to resist very magnetic charm in this position um but they can be brutal ruthless with their ability to cut people off when they uh when they're not having fun anymore which can often mean when the game is over very charming people who were quite ruthless with this position now this is the libra moon in general uh is like a lot of libra placements a placement that can charm the birds out of the trees, so to speak. Put it next to Pluto, though, and that it really, really uh, increases the magnetic pull. But what it also increases, if you have Pluto in this position, is the control over one's feelings and, and perhaps um, a a certain enjoyment of a bit of drama. This can also, Pluto in uh, relation to a Libra moon can also um, cause the person to be so fearful in regards to their relationships because relationships are so important to the moon in Libra but Pluto makes them so distrustful of others and so suspicious of others and so fearful of others that they can become quite obsessed with controlling others and that could happen in a quite unconscious way or it could potentially happen in quite a Machiavellian way with this placement because like I say it's an air moon and um, an air moon with Pluto uh, certainly hard aspects could uh, be quite Machiavellian if they were so inclined. At any rate, there would be a incredible control over the feelings uh, in an, an ability to hide the feelings, a desire to hide the feelings because of a distrust of others. So in general, this placement could make people uh, very difficult to read, fairly ruthless in their dealings with others, and um, potentially uh, embroiled in dramas and even potentially um, setting them up. It may be the case, particularly with the hard aspects, that the person doesn't want to be involved in drama but is continually getting embroiled in drama because of unconsciously behaving in such a way as sets up situations which uh, bring Pluto into relationships. So that can be a, an issue as well. And also simply and you consider the intensity of the charm with Pluto and Libra mixed together um, and the desire to be in relationships but the distrust of others on the other hand you have got a recipe for quite a lot of drama in the life so there can be uh, a good deal of it this in this position uh, with if people have a Libra moon uh, in relationship to Pluto as well, people may also find that they are drawn to very Plutonian partners and their, their drama ensues there as a result of that as well.
they might find people becoming obsessed with them they might find people being they might have very jealous partners and they it may make it very difficult for them to express their natural flirtatious and seductive libra selves so that can be quite a difficult placement so what about moon in the seventh house well Moon in the seventh house is not quite the same as the moon in Libra. It has a, a little bit of a different flavour. Um, because obviously it can be in any sign. Again, relationships are very important to the moon in the seventh house. And they're going to feel most comfortable in relationship. And they're not going to be happy at all if they're not in relationship. So this can be somebody who is permanently either... Um, looking for a relationship or in a relationship it can also be a placement which denotes that the person ends up in a kind of mother child dynamic with their partners um, and or recreates the mother child dynamic that they had as a child in their relationships and if there are difficult aspects to the moon that can mean that they are constantly re repeating childhood traumas in relationships and looking to have that repeated because they're trying to work something out as they go along. And over time, um, by being in those relationships, they actually come to discover themselves. I mean, planets in the seventh house often discover themselves through the other. So you may have had a dynamic as a child um, that you're not conscious, you know, it can often happen that we're not conscious of our childhood dynamics until in, in our adulthood they start to become a problem. Well, somebody with planets in the seventh and um, the moon in the seventh, as in this placement, will often find that they discover that moon through other people, that, that those dynamics that they had in their childhood um, come up through relationships and that the key to discovering let's say uh, their what's going on with their emotional states is um, having it played out through relationships and that may mean a series of heartaches until they kind of work out what is going on and what need they are trying to fulfill and how they might be going about that wrongly and all of the things that we find out when we actually kind of look deeper into our psychology and see what our projections are what um we are uh, asking other people to recreate for us in relationships etc so it can be quite an interesting placement and um, it can also somebody can also uh, end up with younger partners here or um and kind of end up playing a, a mother figure or they can be looking for their mother in 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 the other so there can be that kind of of dynamic uh, in the uh, seventh house and um, they can also what can also happen with moon in the seventh house is that the partner um, or friends or whatever but very often the, the intimate intimate partner or the uh, or a very close friend um, is responsible for their emotional states like they uh, attach their emotional well-being too much to the partner they are living somehow in their, in their, their feelings through them so that they are very much affected by the other and this can also take uh, a wider social uh, especially if it's in one of the social signs um, it can take the the form of the person um, being subject to the feelings of others about them and really being concerned about what other people might be feeling about them and that having a really big effect on their emotional well-being so that it has to be looked out for that you are 
exporting the responsibility for your emotions outside yourself because that can lead to a great deal of discomfort if an anxiety if these uh, the moon is in a sign where it's not comfortable or if the moon is in um, a social airy sign that's prone to anxiety anyway and is very reliant on the feelings of others and if there are unpleasant uh, aspects to to that moon that could cause problems so this it's, it is definitely i would say one of those moon placements which needs a good deal of um consciousness um and kind of coming back into the self and owning owning the emotions and not and really trying not to put too much stock in what others are thinking feeling and um and what our relationship is with them because this cannot be controlled and here if we were to add pluto if we were to add pluto into the moon with the, the seventh house you would find a desperate need to control what others think feel etc because the moon is so fearful and reliant on it um, and you, you could become quite controlling in relationships for that reason friendships and relationships um, now, what about Moon Venus aspects? Well, this can be interesting because in the uh, Moon and Venus um, are two different aspects of the feminine. So, if there are unpleasant aspects between them, if there are disharmonious aspects between them, it means that the mother archetype of the feminine and the Venus archetype, the sexual seductive, uh, I mean, what can I say? The sexual seductive sensual type of woman are at odds with each other. So this can sometimes mean that in the childhood, the mother felt threatened, if this is a girl, the mother felt threatened by the femininity of the child and that the child carries that with them and so they feel uncomfortable in expressing their own femininity because they have the kind of super ego of the mother represented by the moon disapproving of them and trying to prevent them from expressing their sexuality and um, because the mother found it threatening, consciously or unconsciously, mostly unconsciously in these situations. But it is a much more common problem than you might think. Um, if you um, have this as in you're not a woman, it can mean that your uh, ideas of the feminine are in conflict so the thing that you are attracted to and the thing that you feel comfortable with are in conflict this can be the typical madonna whore complex not uh, in order to feel comfortable and secure in a relationship you want a mother mother type figure the madonna in order to feel sexually aroused and excited, you want uh, the Venus type, which is the, the, the whore figure. And this can, that's very, very common amongst uh, um, heterosexual men. Um, of course, this can play out if you're not heterosexual. These are archetypes, they are feminine archetypes, but you can put them into your relationship dynamics no matter what your gender. So um, I really don't want to talk in, in a manner that excludes. And I ask you please just to just slightly tweak my language where appropriate for your own purposes. Um, if the moon and venus are uh, um, in a harmonious aspect this can be very nice because it means that you those two aspects of yourself can be expressed comfortably together and conversely what you're attracted to and what you feel comfortable with are 
in harmony as well. So that can be very nice in, in relationships. It's very auspicious for relationships. However, with the harmonious aspects, because when we have a harmonious aspect between two such planets as the moon and Venus, what can sometimes happen is that you can have a person who is a little bit too complacent. The combination of these um, planets in harmonious aspect can denote somebody who had it too easy and it can make people too complacent and not driven enough to make let's say changes in their lives and it can be quite um a it can be a little bit of an overindulged a little bit of a spoiled placement and it can even be um a a little bit of a too self-indulgent placement as well so it is definitely something to watch out for because occasionally uh, harmonious aspects can cause problems um, and they cause that kind of problem which is the, the problem of not um, motivating you enough to get moving and um, and achieve things because things have come too easy in your life Yes, that's all I'm going to say about those placements. I think I have gone on long enough. <laughs> um, if there's any questions or anything like that, um, if you think that I missed something you were hoping to hear, um, please let me know and I'll see what I can do about making another video. Thank you so much for being here. It's been a pleasure.